when I go to do sermon planning, my process is a little bit like this. Start my day with some prayer. Just doing a first thing down. And then start my day with some reflection on my church family. I, I kind of pray my prayer list mostly on my sermon list. Then, you know, done with that, I'm going, okay. What did I hear Sunday? How are my people? And what did they talk about when they're around water coolers? Now, of course, by then, I've already got a topic. I'll talk to you about topic selection in a minute. Then I go to my passage and I start working. First thing, context. Okay, got my topic set. Go to context. Tick, 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 ting, ting. Got to understand that passage in context. Why, why, why did Jesus say that after the thing that happened before? And why did Luke decide to tell the story that he does after that? Well, is it related? And then after I've got context, I think I can look at this. And that's all my time. Well, what is it? <coughs> but I don't feel like I'm done until the text is something I can tell you in a sentence. Rod, what are you preaching on this Sunday? Okay. So this Sunday, uh, I'm choosing the Exodus uh, 33 passage that's from the Old Testament lectionary this week. Yeah. And... Uh, and the people say, basically, Moses, we want you to be spiritual so we don't have to. Okay? So, uh, how do I see that? I see that there is a struggle inside each of us. That can lead us away from a personal spirituality. Or toward it. Called to the one, but we tend to the other. Okay? And that's after looking at that text. Watching Moses, people say, Man, you do it. We don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to. We're, we're plenty close enough to God, right? With, man, you, you, yeah, get the deed done. Call us when you're done. Tell us what God says. Like in your church, you know, you pastors, you're the only ones who can pray, right? <laughs> The only one God listens to. So it's not that hard. So uh, that's a big deal, right? So after I get that, I'm going to ask myself, what's going to keep people from here? Well, people don't want to be challenged with that kind of spirituality that moves past what they are. They, they doubt that they could ever get there. You know, I, I knocked on that door, nobody answered. Okay? They, they panic because they've seen people who are weird. Uh, they're, they're local, you know neighborhood weirdo religious person and they're going, I don't want to be like that. As if the two were the same thing. Uh, they sometimes got real hurts with God that they've never faced. Ever. I pray to God. I pray close to God. I want my baby not to die. My baby died. We can't talk that out. Um, you know, there are all kinds of protests that I've worked on this week to try to get over it. And then I get to the proclaimed text. We'll talk more about what I'm doing when I'm preaching. So, nuts, nuts and bolts. There are a lot of nuts and bolts. Later, I'm going to talk about some of the things that people don't even acknowledge. But I first want to stop, get some questions, uh, or comments about nuts and bolts. Time to study. A routine for your study day. Mm -hmm. Months in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is that's an interesting question. Uh, there's there's this thing, okay? Uh, in textual versus topical preaching. Let me let me take you to the South where people have these debates. So Allison is just some goofy, mealy mouth. Just <laughs> so Allison doesn't really want to believe the Bible much. It's just, I don't know. So she just got priests. I mean, gosh, I, my sermon today is like, be nice, which was my sermon last week too, and my sermon the week before that. That's, that's my sermon. Okay. And uh, and Nancy 
is a, she believes the Bible, the Word of God. And she's starting her sermon series. Her 14-year sermon series is starting next week. In Genesis 1, verse 1, only verse 1, because it's a very lucrative text. And we're not moving on to Genesis 1, verse 2, until we have learned everything available in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And Nancy spends time telling me, don't go to Alice in the church. She has no idea what she's talking about. Claudia, on the other hand, body is not where Alice is, not where Nancy is, she's relevant. Okay? Claudia comes in and she says, folks, today we're going to talk about Islam and fundamentals. And next week we're going to talk about being a good manager of your finances. The week after that, we're going to talk about managing your moods. And the week after that, we're going to talk about being a better parent. The week after that, we're going to talk about being a better wife and husband. And the week after that, we're going to talk about playing in such a way that it's gratifying even to those around you. Okay, so you got the three extremes. But especially the two of them never talk to these two. Because this person says that she's just reading words all the time. And this person says, He's preaching a million scriptures all out of context. <laughs> and all irrelevant. For cute doctrine that don't mean. What I want to tell you is I think nothing is neat. And that there's an interplay. So let me just, I'll do this. Yeah. Give me just a little hint about me. I have a, a predictable set of sermons. Sorry, 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 topics that are going to come up over my year. Maybe you like these, maybe you don't. In October, I'm going to talk about no fear. Because Halloween makes it really easy to deal with questions of fear. I bet everybody knows what I'm going to talk about during November. You bet, gratitude. In January, I'm going to speak about light and how about I'll do this, diffusion, okay, diffusing light. Because it's Epiphany, a season where we talk about. Now, it used to be I almost in January did what I called my state of the church, which was a vision statement. And I recommend that if that works for your January. I happen to now be slipping toward doing that more in September. And I went back to this last, but this a month ago, I did something much more subtle than that, which I'll really break about. But, um, now, uh, you know, let's see. Uh, let's go to uh, Easter, right? So I talked about the resurrection. I get it, you're trying to explain you don't need one. No, and that's why I'm doing this, because you're wrong. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's, that's actually what is my point. Uh, okay, during Pentecost, which is way the long as the season, isn't it? Actually, I'm not, I won't detail Pentecost because I do two or three things, but you can fairly well predict that during Pentecost, um, I'm going to talk about um, what these ordinary time kind of thinking, how you live your daily kind of your journey. Um, if you look at the liturgical calendar in a way, the first half of the calendar is focused on the life of Jesus and seeing yourself in Jesus. And the second half of the calendar is focused on living out your own personal journey, right? So in a way, there's a seasonal, a, a mega meta season that's over the individual seasons. One of them, you walk, you walk, you picture Jesus up to the resurrection, and then the next is how does the Spirit live in you, and how are we embracing? So, all right, so now, and that was a great question, Nancy, because it's exactly what I want to talk to you about. These are themes that work and need to be preached. There are others that change over the years, okay? So in other words, one month I'll pick up, like February. I didn't put down February, sorry. Uh, I, do, I do something in February on relationships. Now, I'm a United Methodist. I, we have multi-generations in our churches, right? Our evangelical churches, some of them all have 30 and 40 year olds. They do things like make it a better marriage. And if you're divorced, you can't go there anyway. <laughs> so they know they've got a target group. I don't have that. I have everybody. So I'm not going to reduce a sermon down to marriage. 
or, or emote, uh, you know, that kind of relationship. But, uh, but I do I do a section in February on relationships. Now, that's because I feel like people are craving putting the word into meaning in their lives. But then when I'm picking scriptures for somebody a month, two months in advance, first thing in my hand is lecture. First thing in my hand, I picked all lectionary scriptures for no pyramid. Okay, but there are options. Okay, so the lectionary is my first selection source, but I sometimes don't preach the lecture. So you understand the topic is driving me to make a decision about the sermon, and so so there's an interface instead of you on one end and you on the other. And the only alternative being nothing, there's a fourth way to look at this. And that is to say, yes, there are topics that people crave to hear and need to hear. Is there a way that the lectionary can bring me to that? And I hope so. And so it was really easy during October this year. Uh, sometimes it does, it is. Uh, sometimes, I mean, this is really easy. Living light is almost the lectionary topic anyway, and they kind of pick the scriptures that way. Now, we don't read all the four scriptures. Some of you are in churches where everybody wants to read all the scriptures in the lectionary. I, you know, God bless you. And I, I think for most people, they kind of wonder, why do we do this? And so I, if you can explain, if you're able to educate and educate and educate and always re-educate, that's great. And don't ever decide you've educated everybody so you don't have to do it again. Because that's only with the logic you won't have any new people. And you can't think that way. That will come up a lot in later part of this conversation. But this is about picking topics a little bit, so I guess we can move on to uh, a little bit about picking topics. Yeah. Uh, what do you, uh, you skip the December, so you have to in for December? Yeah, I didn't put them all down here, but you know, during December it's Advent. And, you know, it's funny. Um, if you read the history of Advent, and then you look at the way scriptures are chosen for Advent, I get it. But the question about Advent is about anticipating the Christ and the struggle to anticipate the Christ. And sometimes we get off in the first passage in the election hours and in the beginning of Advent is, you know, wait till the end of time, and then there'll be this, you know, the... Desolation and destruction, and you know, the, the naked women will have to run, and the pregnant women will be sorry. The pregnant's like, all right, um, let me think. And what I try to do in Advent is to get back to the theme of the of the season, which is anticipating the Christ is hard. Being open to Christ is hard. So for me, you know, I'm I'm talking about you know, it's, uh, here's a metaphor. My mother hated surprise parties. As a matter of fact, my mother warned us from our infancy, don't you ever. And there's a certain look in a mama's eyes you realize they mean it. We knew we were never going to pull a surprise party on my mom. Okay? Um, the, the, Christ, the way Christ comes to us is always a surprise. The way. And the fact that Christ is always with us, and then once in a while we notice, that's because suddenly our consciousness was brought either by the Spirit or by some other gift. To, and, and, but, but it always is amazing grace. We're always like, anytime we really look, we're stuck. 